Thank you, Sue, and thank you, the organizers. I had the honor and the pleasure of being the co-chair of Working Group 5, together with uh, midwife from Cyprus, Eleni Hartgeorgiou, can't say your name, <laughs> and with the great advice of Kirstine of Nasmo Berg. Okay, so Working Group 5, we had to look at the neuro ne neuropsychosocial characteristics and effects of labor events, which is a huge <laughs> topic, as you can imagine, and we divide it in three or two subgroups. I won't be talking about this part, the group uh, on oxytocin into its childbirth, because this group work, uh, working group was led by Kirstine, and she will be talking about this uh, later. That group is producing five very important papers that are coming out soon on uh, aspects of oxytocin during labor, and I think this is bringing really a new perspective on how we think of childbirth. And there's also another subgroup within working group five looking at the clinical clinicians' experiences of traumatic birth. And that's a whole topic too, very interesting. But for today, I really wanted to focus on the group, our subgroup carried on the psychology of childbirth, because I think this was very beautiful work carried mostly by a group of uh, midwives and psychologists working together, and it was such a pleasure. So I'm really happy to share this uh, work here. Many of the authors are here, and I, I'm, I'm really happy that we can present this work. So I will be really <laughs> quick, but as you know, the, the new World Health Organization guidelines uh, that came out in, uh, in February talk about this. They talk about how uh, high-quality care should uh, encompass both the, the service delivery and the women's experience. And the women have been reporting high levels of disrespect and abusive care. And we, we know obstetric violence is out there in, in all regions and cultures. And we know, and it's great work, this uh, White Ribbon Alliance is doing worldwide to ask women what they want. And women want a positive childbirth experience, but what is that really? The World Health Organization is now saying this includes giving birth to a healthy baby in a clinically and psychologically safe environment. But what is a psychologically safe environment when we talk about childbirth? I think they, that is the question. So we decided to dip into that question. And this is, sorry, it's in Spanish, but this, this is just an anecdote to show where we came from. Many of us were taught this view of, of labor as a mechanical thing with the Friedman curve, the partogram, all these models of the descent. But there's, there was a lot missing on that model, and that's what the World Health Organization is now acknowledging. And uh, this is an obsolete approach to labor assessment. And one of the reasons why it is obsolete is because it left out the women's experiences. And we need to put that back in the picture. We know childbirth represents a major rite of passage in our lives. We know it leaves lo lo lifelong vivid memories. And you know, it can, childbirth can be very positive and empowering, but it can also have the other side of this coin. It can be very traumatizing. And um, so we decided to get clo have a closer look at, the, at the, what happens in the brain during childbirth. And there's all this field of research now looking at the maternal brain during pregnancy. And we now know childbirth is a unique event from a neurohormonal perspective directed by these neurohormones produced both by the maternal and the fetal brain that have a dialogue in labor. And these uh, neurohormones, mo mostly oxytocin, endorphins, and catecholamines, cause this altered state of consciousness that midwives know very well, and that we know is critically sensitive of the environment. And there is an evolutionary reason for all this, as you well know, this is for survival of the species. And there is a reason why when mother and newborn meet for the first time, their brains are in this very, very specific, unique, impossible to reproduce artificially neurohormonal scenario. So with all of this, we got into our research question. We wanted to know, is there, because this is the neurohormonal scenario, is there a universal psychological experience of physiological childbirth? Could we expect a woman giving birth today in Lisbon to go having a physiological birth to experience something similar to a woman giving birth in Nepal or in Thailand? And if, if there is such a process, how would it be affected again by culture or society? But that was the second question. We didn't get into that far. So we decided to carry our research and uh, 
this is, I'm going to go a bit fast over this, but it was very important to look at qualitative research. We published the protocol for this systematic review, and the good news is that this is about to come out, this paper that I'm going to be sharing with you, the results of this research that we did, the, the metasynthesis we carried. So we looked at the studies of original research where the women had shared their, their experiences, and it, it was very important criteria that all these women had had physiological childbirth. And that was a difficult part of the study, to go through the studies, and many beautiful studies, we have to take them out because a few of the women had had uh, medications or epidurals or uh, small interventions. So we ended up with uh, eight studies of all this research. And I'm going to summarize quickly because I think this is beautiful, the results. So we came up with three main uh, topics. And we found that in the early labor, the, the thing is about maintaining self-confidence. And we saw how women experience at the start of labor, and they usually stay quite calm about it. And they like to share the beginning of labor, usually by telling this to a close woman, usually their mother, their neighbor, their sister, and they like to go on with their life normal. And I'm going to share, I think it's beautiful, because we have these quotes from women, and these quotes come from very different studies from different countries, but they share this. So women would say this, like at the beginning of labor, I felt confident by staying in my own living room, or at 10 o'clock, I called the hospital, but of course I had talked to my mom first. I was lying all night, and my dog came and lay by my feet. It was an incredible feeling. All the apples in the trees, it was also silent. And then as the labor is intensified, we observe in, in these studies they had in common that the women withdraw. And, and they had to accept the intensity of labor. And they had to move on to this inner world that some of you know as labor land or the zone. And then they would come back to push. And doing this, they would tell, these, were, these are also quotes, where the women would say, like, they felt this need, you know, to go somewhere where they could actually allow themselves to feel what they were going through. You are so incredibly vulnerable, and I feel that you have such a need that someone is kind to you and shows you some interest. All these studies were of women who had births attended by midwives. This is a very important thing. Nothing else matters, on the, and the universe kind of shrinks to this particular, you know, this particular job that you have to do, which is to birth your baby. And my sense of time was completely lost. This was something also very specific, how this sense of time is lost, as if I had for forgotten in a drought at home. It was a very strange feeling. In both births, I had this feeling for some time that I would never survive this. This is about the end of the labor, right? When I started to push, it was as if a curtain was drawn, a totally different perception. Suddenly I was awake, alert, and quite aware of timing. And then when the, when the baby came out, the women talk about this, about the uniqueness of this birth experience and how much they appreciated that. And they talk about reaching this zenith, this glorious moment, and meeting the baby and coming out with an empowered self. And these were their voices. I was so happy. I honestly never had this kind of joy since I was born. I don't know where this joy came from. I had this holiness, being close to the universe. I felt such gratitude. These are quotes from different woman, women in different studies, okay? As soon as the baby is born, you think incredibly fast, and you look incredibly fast, where there are, without all doubt, ten toes and ten fingers. So they, this was the, the, the summarizing theme, was this, the empowering journey of giving birth. Giving birth physiologically was found, we found, to be an intense and transformative psychological experience, and this is very important, that generates a sense of empowerment. As these women say, I felt I could sense right then, when minutes passed by, I felt that I was a little bit different. When you do that as a woman, you know you can do anything. I realize how everything else in life is easy if you can do that. And during labor, you can do anything. I'm sad that so many women don't get to understand this. And I'm bringing you this so you can also share this message, because I think we need to tell this to the women. And these are the conclusions of our paper. I'm going to read them because I think they're very powerful. Giving birth physiologically in the context, and this is a key aspect, supportive, empathic caregivers is a psychological journey that seems to generate a sense of empowerment in the transition to motherhood. There must be a reason for this, okay? 
The benefits of this process can be maximized through physical, emotional, and social support for women, enhancing their belief in their ability to birth without disturbing physiology, unless there is a compelling need. And we, as healthcare professionals, we really need to understand the empowering effects of, of this psychological experience of physiological childbirth. Of course, we need further research to validate, validate this model in different uh, situations and in different countries. But I think this kind of changes the way we see birth. If we know it, the result of a physiological birth is going to be empowerment, it's also very important for mental health professionals to get to to understand this, also because it, it will affect the way we see traumatic birth. So uh, the paper is coming. This is a picture of a few of us. We were 13 people doing this group, uh, this work for this uh, psychology of childbirth. And working group five was a really big working group. This is a, a picture again of a few of us in our meeting in Switzerland this year. But I really want to say to all of you, thank you for all the beautiful work. Thank <laughs> you.